Oh god. Nice. Intro time. Hey guys, it's Mimi1239 here, and I am here to give you guys my review video for Girl Meets Permanent Record, finally. It's been a week since the episode premiered, and I haven't been able to do this review video, but here it is now. And I know probably not a lot of you guys are going to watch this video, but I'm still going to do it anyway, because I am consistent, and I try to be consistent, and I want to be consistent with my review videos, because they're the things that got me started with Girl Meets World, I guess. They're the things that got me started with YouTube, so I'm going to continue doing them even if not a lot of you guys watch so that's my thing all right i have nothing planned like i usually have a list like two pages of notes for what i want to discuss about this episode but this time i just decided to do it off the top of my head because i don't want to make this a long video when i have that list of points about the episode then i usually take a long time because i want to discuss every single point but this time i'm just doing it off the top of my head whatever comes up i'm going to try to do the recap and yeah all right so the first part of the episode starts with riley and maya in spanish class i forgot the teacher's name but you guys probably know her if you're watching this review video then you know the teacher's name i think then you've watched the episode basically so if you're haven't watched the episode and you don't want to be spoiled then watch the episode first then come back and watch this video okay so i already said the episode starts with them in spanish class and riley and maya get their tests back riley did very poorly she was like i wish this class was in english <laughs> And Maya gets a good grade, she gets an A, Riley gets a D. Later on, the intro comes on, and then we're at Topanga's cafe, and Riley is wearing her D, wearing her test on her shirt. Maya's really, really proud of her good mark. I think this is like the first A she's ever gotten. Zay basically tells Riley that she is doomed <laughs> from getting into a good college just because of this one grade on a test in a class in grade nine. Yeah, and then Farkle says, well, everything counts in high school now, so you have to get good grades. So if you don't get good grades, you're not going to get into a good college and blah, blah, blah. From where I'm from, Canada, we call the schools university. We call the institution a university. We don't call them college. We have colleges as well. I think college is more practical. We have both. So their college is what we call university here, and community college in the States is what we call college here. Wow, four minutes. So then Riley says, oh, I'm never going to be getting into a good college and Maya's like I can go anywhere now like Maya's excited Riley's not excited then at dinner Maya really wants Corey to ask about how everybody's day went because she finally got a good grade and she can brag about it and she does Fanga puts her grade her test paper on the refrigerator so that they can look at it it's like the honor thing Riley she's really sad about about getting a D and stuff and Corey's like well you can't get into a good college if you don't get good grades and Riley's like can I go to Columbia can I go to this place and I like how they did mention Columbia Rowan the actress that plays Riley she wants to go I think to that college because she wants to go into writing so Maya is really happy she's heard Spanish in her neighborhood that is why she picked it up meanwhile Riley hasn't so that's the difference that's why Maya did better on the test and Riley failed I guess she didn't study I don't know. Corey goes to talk to the teacher. The teacher says, I'm not gonna give her extra credit. There's not gonna be any retake or anything because she has to up her game. She has to step it up for high school. And Topanga goes and she tells the teacher, she thanks her for what she did because Riley now has to do that. She has to work hard for her grades. High school is a different level of work, obviously. I would know that. <laughs> Riley goes to talk to the teacher. First of all, she's all like really, really tired from studying a lot, but she still goes to talk to the teacher and teacher says that she cannot get extra credit she cannot do anything about it her test her mark on the test is just one mark one grade on a weekly test and the most important test to the teacher is the test for next week because it tells her what way what path that she wants to go and that's what she bases her marks on i guess the final mark riley studies i know you guys love the scene scene where 
Farco comes into the bay window and they sit down not not even on the bay window in the on the floor in the floor on the floor well also Farco and Lucas have their own little problems with Zay being a better baseball player than Lucas and Smackle being smarter than Farco it's interesting how they didn't have both like Lucas and Farco come to talk to Riley in that scene they only had Farco I know a lot of you guys think their end game and I really, I just love it all together. Like, I'm not gonna, how do I say this? I don't really look forward to who's endgame. I just appreciate every scene that every character has with one another. But I liked it a lot. I love how Riley has Sparkle to talk to, not just Maya. She doesn't have to have all her scenes with Maya. She can have scenes with other characters on the show. And Sparkle is a good pick for this one because he's also struggling with someone being smarter than him. And then Riley studies harder. She gets a good grade on her test. An A-. And that's how the episode ends, I guess. So... You guys know I do speak fluent Spanish. It's my second language. For my sister, it's her first language. My parents talked Spanish to her, so she picked it up first before English, before she went to school here. But for me, it's my second language because my dad decided to talk to me in English. They wanted, my teachers wanted me to learn English first, so I picked it up first and then I started speaking Spanish at home. My mom's always been the one that has taught me Spanish by speaking, so that's why I know it. And then in grade nine, I took a Spanish course, even though like I knew Spanish already, but it was a good course because it wasn't that hard for me. But I do understand, I do sympathize with Riley having a hard Hard time learning another language because for me that episode for me was when I learned French when I had to learn French I took nine years of French and I still don't know anything about it I took it from grade one to grade nine grade nine was hard because grade nine was like you know like high school you guys get it high school is a lot serious it's a lot more work they take French here a lot very like in school very seriously <laughs> I had a very hard time learning French, so I understand why Riley has a very hard time learning a different language. But Spanish, for me, still hard. I mean, even though I speak it fluently, I know how to read, I know how to write. It's always, that's the hard part for me, writing. But reading and speaking it is not hard. Learning another language depends on the person. It could be difficult or could be really easy. So I understand why, like if I had someone in my family that spoke French or that knew French and that could teach me, then I would be like, yeah, okay, I can <laughs> speak French. I, I can learn it quicker but for me that's always been my struggle and that in grade 9 was like my lowest mark ever so I understand that and the points that grade 9 marks count for university or for college for post-secondary that for us like where I'm from are in our system that's not the case in grade 9 and grade 10 they only care about that you passed and that's it. In grade 11, grade 12, those are the marks that count for your university or college applications. And we don't have SATs here. We take a literacy test in grade 10. And if you pass, you have to pass. When you pass, you can graduate. You take it in grade 10. But if you don't pass, you cannot graduate. You need the literacy test. It is basically an English exam and that's it. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Grade 9 here isn't as important as your grade 11 and grade 12 marks. All they care about is that you pass so I also want to clear this up in my I think it was my promo reaction plus predictions video I said it's not the end of the world if you fail one test or if you get a bad mark on one test and I still believe that I still stand by that because it is not the end of the world especially when you're in grade 9 I've gotten bad marks in tests I'm still a straight A student I still make it on the honor roll when you get a bad mark this is my advice to people that are going into grade 9 next year or that are in grade 9 and going into grade 10 or whatever you want to. You can take this advice from someone who's about to graduate in one week from high school. I mean, if you want to take this, I don't know. But from what I learned about being in high school and about taking the challenge of going into a harder, a harder place, learning in a harder environment, and grade 12 is a lot harder. It is hard. But let's talk about grade 9. Grade 9, people will always tell you that it's not going to be easy and it actually won't be but you will adjust to it so don't think that you're alone and that nobody is there to help you obviously there are people that are there to help you there are people that have been there before like myself and when you get a bad mark on a, on a test it's not the end of the world worry about your next test you get a bad mark you 
Don't have to hit yourself over the head about it. You can give yourself a talk. That's what I usually do. I give myself a talk. I say, okay, Michelle, you have to do better on the next test. You study and voila, you get a better grade. If you need help, ask your parents if they can help you. Ask your teacher if they can help you. They are there. If you get one bad grade versus all A's on other tests, it's not that big of a deal. And I got a comment on my prediction slash Pomo reaction video for this episode. Someone saying that if my dad found out I got like a D on a test or a C, he would kill me. It would be the end of the world. Now, I'm not a parent and I don't want to sound like I'm being judgmental or that I know better than parents because I obviously don't. But this is how my parents have taught me. When they see my report card, I think this was starting from like grade 8, I think. When they saw my report card, they're like, as long as you did your best, this is really cheesy, but as long as you did your best, that is good enough for us. Doing your best is all that can be aspire to do you can only do as much as you can not everybody is the best at everything i personally am not the best at science and even now math i used to be really good at math i used to love math in grade 12 i hated math so much i hated calculus i hated advanced functions i still took it i don't know why but i did and i tried my best it was so hard in other areas such as music or religion you know all those English, all those creative subjects, I was a better student, but calculating and math, accounting, I was also pretty good, but it got harder in grade 12. Okay, so don't beat yourself over a grade on a test when you know you can do so much better and you will and just do it. Just like Nike, just do it. I'm not saying that, okay, you got a bad grade. Don't worry about it and don't stress and then don't study and then do bad on the next test. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying learn from it, learn from your mistake and do better and continue. Move forward because you cannot be stuck on one grade on one test and that's i think what the meaning of this episode was the lesson what the teacher was trying to say good teachers see your capability through the next test i guess that's what i i don't know what i'm saying and yeah good teachers i've had good teachers if you've had good teachers you know that they see a lot more in you and they push you to do better and that's why i think this episode represented a very mature way of looking at someone, Riley, a straight-A student, getting a bad grade. Riley, a good student. The teacher knows, doesn't know, well, she doesn't know Riley because she's in grade 9, she's a new student, but the teacher sees her potential. That's why I love this episode. Also, someone mentioned, I think this was in my, this was in my reaction video for this episode. I think your name is Isabel, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I am right about this, I think. Because you speak Spanish too, I think you're you're Hispanic or I think you're Hispanic, right? I'm, I'm just gonna assume you are. I'm sorry if I'm if you're not, but since you speak Spanish, you said that Riley sounds like she's speaking French instead of Spanish, like the just her accent, her span like her English, her accent when she speaks Spanish sounds like she's speaking French and I have to agree completely, a hundred, a thousand percent. Yes. Le papa es un buen. Go to I mean, I'm not trying to crit critique Rowan's way of speaking <laughs> the language, but yes. Anybody that watches Riley speak Spanish in this episode, she sounds like she's speaking French. And it's so weird because I had to learn French, as, as I already mentioned here, but Riley sounds like she's speaking French. It is hilarious because I can barely understand some of the things she, or even ever, anybody else, even sometimes when Maya would speak or Maya or the teacher or Riley, sometimes when they would speak, I wouldn't understand. I don't know if it's because they speak too fast or because they're not pronouncing it correctly. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just slow. I don't know. So yeah, I, I did notice that. Isabel, Isabella. I don't remember if that's your name. What else? Oh my gosh, this funniest. I totally agree with this part. Part where Smackle said to Zay, don't hit on me in front of Lucas. And then she said to Lucas, don't hit on me in front of Farkle. And then she's like, we're a quadrilateral and we're better than the triangle. That was hilarious. I <laughs> I could not, I have to like, I, keep, I have to keep watching that scene. That is hilarious. The writers are doing so good with Smackle's character. I love her. I love how they're bringing her into the episodes. And she brings so much comedy into these episodes, referencing 
watching the triangle which she's not even a part of but it's so so funny and every time she says a funny line like about this triangle it's like my favorite line in the episode i love smackle so much and the fact that she puts herself in a quadrilateral is oh my god and i would admit the quadrilateral is better than the triangle honestly <laughs> oh my gosh it's hilarious and as i already mentioned farkle and riley ryarkle ryarkle fans here it is for you come in welcome we're going to talk about this scene now when farkle said or when i don't remember who said it riley or farkle i think riley said this you chose smackle because you want to up your game and some people have been saying that farkle should choose riley because she is not as smart as farkle and she, he won't be that intimidated of her his girlfriend and the only two people that are dating in this whole in this group are Farkle and Smackle, right? And then the whole triangle thing. And then Zay is just by himself. <laughs> Where was I going with this? I got the impression when Riley said, you chose Smackle, just the way she said, not the way she said it, but like when she said it, I was like, oh my God, is this so something gonna happen here? Is she gonna realize that she should be with Farkle or something like that? I don't know. I am a neutral shipper. Let's try to put that sign, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, is that a hint from the writers? That's what I'm wondering here. Are they trying to say that Smackle and Farkle shouldn't be together? I love Smackle and Farkle together, by the way. I'm a neutral shipper. I ship everybody together, so I don't care. But just, like, I'm just thinking about this. Like, this is a theory of mine. But is that a hint? Should we look into that? So I love that scene between them. It's so personal. It's so private. It's, well, same thing, I guess. It's so them. I love it when they have a scene together because they just get along so well and they have, I think they have chemistry. I think everybody in the cast has chemistry and that's a very big problem for us because we're like, no, they should be together. No, they should be. Yeah. I love how, uh, like, they put Augie in the situation that he's in second grade now and he's like, this is so much harder than first grade. Meanwhile, everybody that's like older than Augie and like older than second grade, we're like, yeah, right. Like you're, it's gonna be a lot harder than that, <laughs> than second grade. Second grade is so much easier, and I, I'd rather be in second grade again. Were there any Corpanga moments? I think were there. I don't, I don't want to miss anything. Ah. Uh. I'm going to read out some of your tweets because I asked you guys what you thought of this episode. We are going to read them right now and hopefully this won't take that long. Let's see, it probably will, sorry. First tweet from at Princess Mad Dog 6. Thank you for always tweeting me. Mwah. You said, while I definitely think every episode has been great so far, in my opinion, Girl Meets Permanent Record is the strongest so far. I do agree with that. I love Permanent Record so much. I love how there's no side plots, like with Augie and everything. Not that I don't love Augie or Ava, but I do like it when they have just a main plot. It doesn't take, it just doesn't take away from the whole episode when there's a main plot. I, I just love when there's just one plot and we're just focused on that plot. I love when characters like Ava or Augie or other side characters come into the plot to the main plot that's what I love uh, I think they should have more episodes like that and then at Motley underscore 91 said I liked it the Spanish teacher kind of reminded me of Mr. Feeney in a way she wanted her students not to have the easy way out I agree I love the English teacher no, that was Mr. Feeney. Was, no, that was Turner, sorry. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> the Spanish teacher. Yes, I think that's what the writers were going for. The Spanish teacher being uh, sort of like a, a, a Feeney figure. That, that sounds really weird. A Feeney figure. Yeah, but a younger one and a girl. But I hope we see her more often. I really want her to be in more episodes. Uh, this is continued. I love how Cory and Topanga are acting more like themselves, like they did in Boy Meets World. Ryder and Shiloh did great at directing. Yes, I love how Cory and Topanga seem to be getting back into their roles from Boy Meets World. And I think it's more because they're getting more scenes together. They're getting more interactions with each other. So they're getting back into it. I love it. And I love when like Sean or Eric appears, like any of the old cast from Boy Meets World appears. I love how Corey is just, he just goes back into his Boy Meets World self. I just love that. And it makes him even more funnier. So I hope there's more characters on the show from Boy Meets World. And I hope that Corey and Topanga get more scenes together because everybody ships them, especially me. <laughs> Corpanga forever. All right. And that's the end of the Twitter 
people. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tweeting me. You guys can follow me as usual at Mimi fanfic1239 I almost blanked out there it's on the description box below I love this episode haven't heard anything bad from it so far maybe that's because I haven't been really looking that much but I've heard some reviews so I have checked out some other videos of people reviewing this episode so you should definitely go check out other reviews they have different opinions I don't know but this is all that I caught from this episode I loved it Spanish forever yes and one thing when Riley said goal well that is a stereotype even though it's kind of not because like I mean I used to play soccer when I was younger well my mom loves soccer more than my dad my dad loves watching games my uncles get really really they get so excited when there's a goal but it's sort of true it's sort and not true I don't know I don't want to get into that stereotype but I don't know what I feel about that reference but some people said they didn't really like it I don't know but soccer is a common thing in Latin America you know I think all over the world soccer is a universal sport so so I guess that's the end of this review video I give it a I always give really good reviews really high reviews and then I look at other people's reviews I'm like oh okay some people give it that episode an 8 out of 10 Oh right, I gave that a 10 out of 10, even though I had a lot of flaws, so... <laughs> Okay, I'll give it a 9.5. I don't know why. Okay, I'm basically Riley when she was studying all night and she couldn't understand anything. That was me with math, with calculus. All day, all night, didn't know anything. Sleep before you do a test. That is my advice. And, and chemistry as well. I hate science. And... And that's the end of this video guys. Thank you guys for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want. The subscription button is right there. We are very very close to 500 subscribers. Let's try to get it. Let's try to get it. Alright. <laughs> All my social media accounts are right over here. Right over here. Yeah, right there. You can check out my latest video which I forgot what it was. It was my Girl Meets Triangle predictions video. My 7 years in the 90s. After talk for chapter 4. 43 is right there. My reaction to this episode, permanent record, is right there. And I love you guys so, so much. Thank you guys for always watching. I hope you have a really nice day or night or whatever time you're watching this. And, and remember guys, there is no end to your horizon. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!